Hey guys, this is Jimbo from Retro Game Lounge. This is Mark from Empty Charge 7. And you are watching The Retro Lectors. As the year draws to a close, I'm going to showcase some of my favorite things that I have in the man cave. As you enter the man cave, you're basically greeted with a bunch of random things from Beatles to Superman to DVDs and a bunch of other stuff. But over on the right, which started off with my Superman collection, I have a huge collection of Superman memorabilia and VHSs, comic books, and a whole bunch of other random things, pops and a few other things. And some of these are my favorite things, like this alarm clock here. My wife bought me a few years ago and it's never come out of the box and it's been basically displayed proudly there. In this exact same corner, you're basically greeted with my Beatles memorabilia, also with my 1972 Princess Claire Tone audio record player. DVDs of dead media, but I still like to have my old DVDs here. I don't collect them anymore. These are just stuff that I've had over the years and you know, I've collected. Some of them are bootlegs, but they're very good bootlegs. I know that's a little bit frowned upon, but I know you can still get a lot of this media over on Netflix, Amazon Prime and stuff like that. But every once in a while, I like to put a little bit of physical media in the DVD player for the kids. Some stuff that you don't get necessarily on Netflix or Amazon Prime, movies that are sometimes taken off and you can't watch really regularly or stream it as often as you would like. So you have a little collection over here, some of my favorite movies from Fight Club to Saving Private Ryan to Gladiator to Christmas Story. These are some of my favorite movies and I love this little corner here. It showcases who I am as an individual and what kind of music and movies I'm into as a person. Now we get to the gaming side of things. Over here is my inset wall alongside with my DVDs. I built an inset wall that you can hang the shelves on and they're not protruding because one of the things I didn't want was more furniture into the room and it clutters the room and basically makes the room a little bit smaller. I wanted something that took the stuff off the floor and basically put it on the walls. So what I did was I designed an inset wall and I basically got some pine and some brackets and put that uh, all into there. When I go for collecting, especially for anything that's not the Dreamcast, because I'm a big Dreamcast collector, anything that's not Dreamcast related, I like to have a, some sort of a connection to it. I'm not just gonna grab stuff just to fill a shelf. I think I have about 500 games and I've had the opportunity to pick up more, but it's just, I don't want something that I'm not gonna play or something that has no sentimental meaning to me as a gamer or even to my kids, something that they would like to play. I'm not just gonna pick up a random game just to add it to the shelf and hope that one day I'm gonna come across and play it or, or anything like that. Most of these games have a sentimental value to me or there's something that I really liked and, and played in the past. Some of you that are familiar with the channel, you can see my little backdrop back there. That's one of my favorite places to hang in the basement. That's where I have all my consoles hooked up and I like to play a little bit of gaming down there. I have a dual monitor and dual TV set up there. Uh, this right here is my editing station. If I'm not editing on this, I'm editing on my MacBook. And whenever I can do that, I do that around the house, which is a nice change of pace. I'm not just cooped up in one area and have to edit in one area. Sometimes, you know, you're editing for 10, 12 hours and being cooped up in one area kind of de de demoralizes me. Well, down here, I like to surround myself with a whole bunch of different things, some of my favorite things. Hockey being one of my favorite sports and the Detroit Red Wings being one of my favorite teams. I like to basically surround myself with all the memorabilia that I had and I've collected over the years. Some of the stuff is still in storage and I would love to have the ability to display more, but right now I don't have as much space as I want just because I like stuff to have its own area. My music set up, my movie set up, my games, my Dreamcast, my consoles, all set up in a certain way and I don't want it to have where it's melding into one location or everything melds in together. I just like to have everything different and distinguished so that when you come down here it's like there's something to see at different points and if you're not into one thing you're into something else some of you who are familiar with my channel you can see my backdrop in every single video i film right here i have my couch right there and i have a tripod that's set right on top of my couch and it has my backdrop right here you have 13 consoles i have 14 total consoles connected to the tvs from the Atari 2600 all the way to PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. My Xbox One is actually upstairs in the family room and my Switch is upstairs as well. I have the ability to play just about any console at the push of a finger. There's only two consoles right now in this collection that 
does not work. And that's the original Xbox and my Atari 2600. I think I left both of them on one, one day. I know my Atari 2600, I left it on overnight one day and it being from the, you know, the 80s, it just fried and I don't know why that happened. It just stopped working. So right now it's just a piece of memorabilia that's there. To achieve this setup, I have a dual TV, like I said, but I also have four Kallax Ikea boxes that are stacked on top of a two by eight that I created a bridge across. I was able to grab the 32 inch Toshiba on top of 20 inch Magnasonic and created a little entertainment unit with it. Each box has its own console and each set of boxes is basically a generation of gaming. And below that I have my PlayStation collection, which includes my PS1, my PS2, and my PS2 Fat, my PS3, and my PS4. Behind me is my Nintendo Nook, which is the NES, my N64, my GameCube, and my Wii. They all have their own part of a journey that I've basically accomplished over the years. My NES was one of my first consoles ever to amass a library of and my N64 was some of my favorite games. Mario 64 and Legend of Zelda are basically my top tier in, on that console and probably of all time. Uh, below that I have my Xbox collection, which is my original Xbox, my Xbox 360, and my Xbox One, which is upstairs. The 360 is connected. If I want to play some backwards compatibility, I can play that at a moment's notice and it's connected all to the 32 inch Toshiba right there. And over here, this is my Sega Dreamcast collection. This is a total of 212 Sega Dreamcast North American set from games like Power Stone, Crazy Taxi, Sonic Adventure, to Legacy of Kane, Mars Matrix, Marvel vs. Capcom. The Sega Dreamcast has such a deep library of games ranging from shooters to fighters to action adventure to just about everything in between. The Sega Dreamcast has you covered. If you can get over the controller and deal with some of the controller issues, it's a fantastic system to play and have as a collection. I've had so much fun collecting and sharing my experiences of the Dreamcast on this channel. I certainly hope that you guys enjoy it. I hope you guys enjoy this game room tour. Please like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you guys think. What was your favorite part of this whole collection of randomness that I have down here? Please let me know. Thanks guys.